have a connection with uh, with your loved ones and your family, and you just feel when something's not right, when something's wrong. And that's the feeling I got, something was wrong. Girl Scout Allie Lowitzer spoke with her mom by cell phone to let her know that after she got off the school bus at her bus stop, she was going to walk to her job, the burger barn, to pick up her very first paycheck. But after Allie exits that bus, she's never seen or heard from again. She checked in with me to let me know that she was going to ride the bus home and she was going to walk to work and pick up her paycheck. And um, that was the last that I talked to her. Investigators released images from a surveillance camera showing Allie getting off the bus that day, hoping to get new leads. But many of those leads have turned up empty. From our standpoint, the mere fact that she has had no communication with anybody uh, that we know of um, makes it look like there's a possibility of, of something having happened. Yeah, we think that there's foul play. The unfortunate thing is, is, is we don't have any proof that there's foul play, and we don't have any proof that there's not. Nobody has seen um, Allie since she got off of the bus. Now the family is offering a $10,000 reward, hoping someone will come forward with the one clue that could bring Allie home. Just pray that she's safe wherever she is. Yeah, that's the best I could hope for. If you could speak to her now, what is your message? My message to Allie right now would be, you know, baby, if you're safe, if you're watching this, um, just give us a call, you know, let us know that you're okay. Set our hearts at ease, set our minds at ease, and we can work through everything else. So if you're out there, we just need to know you're okay. Every day, 2,300 people go missing in America, disappear, vanish. Their families left waiting, wandering, hoping, but never forgetting. And neither have we. 50 people, 50 days. For 50 nights, we go live, spotlighting America's missing children, girls, boys, mothers, fathers, grandparents. They are gone, but where? Tonight, live to Texas, a Girl Scout calls her mom after school to let her know she's taking the bus to work, pick up her check, then to walk straight home. 16-year-old Allie, never seen alive again. Even missing an Alice in Wonderland birthday party she had planned. No cell phone calls, no text messages, nothing. But can grainy surveillance video images shed light on what happened to Allie? What clues could the last known images of the girl reveal tonight? Where is missing Girl Scout? Allie Lowitzer. Jean, what happened? April 26, 2010, it was nine months ago, she went to school, she got on the school bus to come home, and the surveillance photos show she was on that bus. It shows she got off that bus at about 3 p.m. She was so close to her home, but you know what? She wanted to pick up her first paycheck. She'd even told her mother she was going to go pick up her first paycheck. I want to go out to Natisha Lance, Nancy Grace producer. Allie lived on her cell phone, right? She did. She would send about 3,000 texts per month, Jean. So it is so interesting that after this day, no text, no phone calls, no correspondence on Facebook, no correspondence on MySpace. And also, Jean, when she got off of the bus, she sent another text. It was at 2.57. She sent it to a friend of hers asking the friend to come over. The friend wasn't able to come over to her house. But that just shows that she was making plans for after she picked up her paycheck for a friend to come over to her house which goes against her being a runaway. But yet the Houston authorities determined they believed she voluntarily left. And so it's been the responsibility of her parents who are with us tonight to try to find her and locate her. John and Joanne Lowitzer joining us tonight from Houston, Texas. Now this was Spring, Texas, where this all happened. Your daughter went to what high school? Spring High School? Spring High School. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, your daughter love the phone text constantly 3,000 texts a month we understand were you able through your private investigator to read some of those texts in the months before she went missing no ma'am um, the uh, phone provider does not back up the, the data to be able to to store the physical messages um, all we were able to retrieve was uh, dates and times and phone numbers
dates and times and phone numbers. Did you see anything unusual, out of state? Did, did you call all those phone numbers? Oh, yes. Uh, with the help of Don from the Lower Recovery Center, um, we, we sat down an entire day and went through the phone records and made phone calls and identified a lot of the numbers and um, talked to a lot of her friends. Let's go out to the callers. Jean in North Carolina. Hi, Jean. Hey, Jean. Born in Atlanta, I have the same passion as Nancy and you to solve these cases. Did she have a boyfriend? And um, did she ever make it to that burger joint? That's a really good question. Did she have a boyfriend? Um, to Joanne Lowitzer, she actually had a little boyfriend come over to your house that weekend before she went missing, right? Yes, ma'am. Um, he, he spent most of the day Sunday with us, uh, the day before she went missing. And uh, after he left, um, you know, we had a little chat about him, and she did confirm that uh, it was her new boyfriend. And um, he was actually the first place that I went to uh, when we discovered that she didn't make it to work. And what did he say? Um, he had also been trying to reach her by uh, calling her cell phone and texting her, and he didn't receive a response either. All right. And to Gina, North Carolina, no, she never made it to the Burger King. To Pat Brown, criminal profiler and author of The Profiler, joining us from Washington, D.C., what are your thoughts? Is, is this a runaway situation to you, somebody who voluntarily left without a dime in her pocket? I've never seen a case that looks less like a runaway situation. Yeah. That the police would say because they didn't have evidence of foul play, it didn't happen. How many times have we seen a woman, girl, just go missing off the street? Somebody simply grabs her, throws her in a vehicle, she's gone. Unless uh, she like drops her phone on the street and it gets smashed, you won't see that anything happened. Even if you drop the phone, somebody coming along goes, oh, look, a free telephone. They could simply take that away. So just because there's no evidence doesn't mean anything. Also, she could have voluntarily gotten into somebody's car she knew just to chat or say, I'll take you up to the burger joint, and that person drove off with her. Again, no sign of foul play. So, I mean, this girl has no history in her background. She's got a wonderful life. She's involved in a lot of activities. Usually when we see runaways, we see a problem with authority. Uh, they're having all kinds of difficulties. They're running around with uh, some all kinds of boys. They're into drugs. Uh, and we see that. We see that on our Facebook pages and our MySpace pages. We see nothing And we see none of that here. To Mark none Class, president and founder of Class Kids Foundation, Mark, listen to this. Let's look at the facts. Do you know that another young girl in the same area was almost abducted shortly before Allie went missing? Someone tried to grab her from the neck. She bit the man, and she got away. <clears throat> Your thoughts? Well, Jean, the, the, I, I think you made a very good point earlier about law enforcement having criteria to determine if a child is a runaway or not. Uh, it could be as simple as a series of questions to determine their propensity for running away. Obviously, this is a girl that most likely did not run away. But there's another common thread. There's another thread that we see regarding uh, school bus stops and children disappearing from school bus stops, and I think that there are probably solutions to that problem. It's a really good point. We'll talk more about that. Live to Texas, a Girl Scout calls her mom after school to let her know she's taking the bus to work, pick up her check, then to walk straight home. 16-year-old Allie, never seen alive again. Even missing an Alice in Wonderland birthday party she had planned. No cell phone calls, no text messages, nothing. But can grainy surveillance video images shed light on what happened to Allie? What clues could the last known images of the girl reveal tonight? Where is missing Girl Scout Allie Lowitzer? More details emerge in the case of a missing Texas Girl Scout, last seen getting off the school bus just blocks from her own home. Yeah, we think that there's foul play. However, Allie's family is sure that she was kidnapped or is being held against her will. The unfortunate thing is, is, is we don't have any proof that there's foul play and we don't have any proof that there's not. The mere fact that she has had no communication with anybody uh, that we know of um, makes it look like there's a possibility of, of something having happened. No activity on her cell phone, no text messages at all, no use of a credit card or an ATM. Video reportedly shows her leaving the bus just 30 feet from her own home. 
That's the last time anyone saw Allie. Allie's parents say they've had no contact with her since she was last seen, and there's been no activity on her cell phone. She was going to walk to work and pick up her paycheck, and um, that was the last that I talked to her. I'm Jean Casares. Mark Class makes a fantastic point in regard to school buses and how many children are abducted when they get off the bus so close to their homes. Let's go out to the lawyers. Randy Kessler, defense attorney, joining us out of Atlanta tonight, and Peter Ellican, defense attorney and author of Super Predators Out of Boston. To Randy Kessler, you know, in all the cases that I've covered and the cases that we've had here on Nancy's show, what happens is predators watch the patterns of these children as they are walking home, as they're walking off the bus, and it is a crime of opportunity. Your thoughts? I thought so. This, if it is a crime, if it's not a runaway situation, it's, it may be the perfect crime, maybe by accident or maybe by intent. But if someone out there is watching and has anything to do with this or knows about it, things catch up with people, and there's still a chance to save yourself and save her. But, uh, you know, it may just very well be unique opportunity someone was driving by or somebody planned it out perfectly um, but they will be caught sooner or later peter ellican joining us tonight from boston defense attorney what is ludicrous in this situation is her parents are having to finance every bit of search to find their daughter there's something wrong with that when she leaves with just the clothes on her back and left her life behind that's true. Uh, you know, if, if she was declared, if the police were declaring this investigation of an abduction, then all kinds of resources suddenly come in. Crime Stoppers and the FBI, etc. Instead, these poor people are stuck having to do their, their own uh, self-financed search for her and, and do their own little bake sales or fundraisers. And it really is outrageous. That I don't know why the police are so dug in on the idea that, uh, we, uh, look, we've, we've looked into the idea that she could be a runaway. That hasn't worked. Why don't we look into something else? Why leave any stone unturned here? I don't know what's going on here with this police You're department. You're so right, Peter, but, because um, the FBI would have come in, the state authorities would have come in. Thank goodness for the Laura Recovery Center. With us tonight is Don Davis. She is the senior case manager who has been in charge of this case. Don, you had a search this weekend for Ali, didn't you? Where did you go and, and did you find anything that you can tell police? That's correct. Um, we went and searched again over some areas behind Allie's house just simply to make sure that nothing had been missed on prior searches. Were you able to take scent dogs initially when you got going last April uh, to at the bus stop and did you find anything through those scent dogs? We did. Um, we had dog teams, ATV teams, horse teams, foot searchers. Uh, we did door-to-door -door canvassing, flyer distribution. Um, and. The dog team did follow her scent uh, back to the home. However, they could not tell that that wasn't a track that may have been laid earlier. Right, an earlier scent. Um, let's go out to her parents again. John and Joanne Lowitz are joining us tonight from Houston, Texas. We know that your daughter's birthday is tomorrow, and that is going to be very, very difficult for you. We want to help find your daughter. We want everybody to look at the picture of Allie Lowitzer. Can you just describe her to us physically? Her hair color, what it might be now, are there any birthmarks on her, anything identifiable? Uh, at the time of her disappearance, her hair was dyed auburn. Um, she had braces on her upper and lower teeth with pink bands. She has a small chicken pox scar between her eyes. Um, she has a piercing in her nose. Um, she is about 5'2", 145 pounds. Uh, she was last seen wearing black and white checkered skinny jeans, a white t-shirt, a dark gray hoodie, and her backpack was very brightly colored and checkered as well. And she had on black, uh, solid black skate type shoes, kind of like uh, Vans or, or DCs. Joanne, if she can hear you tonight, what do you want to tell her or who she may be with? I want to tell her that I love her and miss her. Um. <sighs> and if there is somebody that took her that is watching this.
and uh, to let somebody know where she is. We just need to know if, that she's okay. Allie Lowitzer, 16 years old. Her birthday is tomorrow. Five feet two, 145 pounds, hazel eyes, auburn hair, and she wears braces on the top and the bottom. That's an identifying mark right there, those braces. I want to go out to the callers, Chelsea in California. Hi, Chess, Chelsea. Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you for calling. Thanks. Um, I had a question. Has her backpack or credit cards or anything, cell phone maybe been located? And um, I know you said that the credit cards haven't been used, but um, I just was curious if they've been located. Okay, good question. To John Lowitzer, she was only 16. Did she even have a credit card? She didn't have any credit cards. Uh, there's been no activity with her social security card. We have not located her cell phone. We have not located her backpack. Uh, her cell phone does have GPS on it, and uh, we, we constantly check to see if that GPS has been turned on, and the last place it's showing is actually at the bus stop. Hmm. So that check, she never picked up that check, and that paycheck was one of the first paychecks she'd ever gotten, right? Yeah, she had worked there for about a month, and she had been paid a couple times before, but uh, she was going to walk up to work and uh, see if she can collect her paycheck and work that night. What about it, Mrs. Lowitzer? No activity on her cell phone. What did she say when she spoke to you that day? Uh, she checked in with me to let me know that she was going to ride the bus home and she was going to walk to work and pick up her paycheck. And um, that was the last that I talked to her.